Hello YouTube, this is Corbin22 here, back with another 100 point squadron build for Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. Uh, tonight's build is a build that, it's, um, it's a build that me and my roommate came up with together. Uh, he chose the ships and the pilots, and I chose the, um, I helped to choose the upgrades to help maximize the ship's performance. Uh, the ships we chose tonight are, um, Muller Methal in his TIE Fighter, Captain Jonas in the TIE Bomber, and Rexor Brath in his TIE Defender. Uh, now... I'd say the focus behind this build is um, I, I, kind of um, it's kind of a mix of teamwork and um, divide and conquer. See, uh, Rex or Brath and Captain Jonas will be working together because Captain Jonas's ability um, can go hand in hand with Rex or Brath's ability, and then Mal and Mathel will be acting like the lone wolf, going around, providing outside support, getting in as close as he can to a target, and inflicting maximum damage upon them thanks to their ability. Now. Um, so yeah, that's their ships. This is the pier of the pilots. Let's look at their stats. So it's not that much of an ex it's not really that much of an extensive build. Most of the upgrades have gone to the Tie Bomber. Um, but um, that being said, that uh, Molly Mathel and Rexor Brat have a couple of upgrades to help uh, of their own to help them perform at, to the best of their ability. So let's start with the uh, let's start with the slowest ship in the build, which is the Tie Bomber, piloted by Captain Jonas. He has a uh, pilot skill of 6, he flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Bomber, he has an attack value of 2, an agility value of 2, a hull value of 6, and a shield value of 0. He can take on the Focus, Lock On, and Barrel Roll action, he costs 22 squadron points, and he's able to take on an Elite Pilot skill upgrade, 2 Warhead upgrades, 2 Missile upgrades, and a Bomb upgrade. His ability states, when another friendly ship at range 1 attacks with a secondary weapon, it may be roll up to 2 attack dice. So this is where kind of Rex or, um, Cam Jonas goes hand in hand at Rex or Brath. Um, Captain Jonas' ability allows him to allows um, his wingmates to um, reroll up to two additional uh, up to two attack dice up to two of his attack dice if they attack with a secondary, and that can be any secondary. It can be with a, a cannon, it can be with an ion a turret, it can be with a missile or a bo um, missile or a torpedo. Uh, as long as it's classified as a secondary weapon, as not as as long as it's not a primary weapon, then or or a weapon that um, uses primary weapon value, then um, you can be you are allowed to um, re-roll up to two of those dice as long as you're within range one of the enemy that, of the of your ally that's attacking. So um, yeah, and that applies to whether Captain Jonas goes first or goes last. It doesn't matter. His ability applies to whoever ship attacks as long as they're within range of him. Now to start, um, I've chosen to give him um, a modification called the Twin Ion Engine Mark II. It's a um, enough a modification that can be used only with tie with only enemies of um, ships that have uh, that are tie fighters. So tie fighters, tie bombers, tie defenders, tie interceptors, and pretty much any ship that has the word tie in them, they can be used. Uh, it states you may treat all all bank maneuvers as green maneuvers. So um, with this card, it turns half of Captain Jonas's um, uh, maneuver dial into green maneuvers because there's there's a lot of banks. And his right now his his only green maneuvers are I think one two and three straight ahead, uh, his sharp his sharp turn two and his um, Koi Grand five are red maneuvers. So um, it's because he's a bomber it's kind of hard to get rid of that stress if he ever gets stressed. So with the twin nine engine mark two it turns all of his banking maneuvers into green maneuvers. So his bank two his bank one bank two and bank three maneuvers, um, they all get turned to green maneuvers that allows him to get rid of the stress that, any stress that he uh, gets inflicted upon much eat much more easily now for his elite pilot skill i've chosen veteran instincts which increases his pilot skill by two so that basically means that it makes um captain jonas go from a level six pilot to a level eight pilot so he is the same pilot skill as rex or breath so um that means you have a choice of which one attacks first and which one moves first which can be quite advantageous if you use the card correctly now for his first his warhead slot I've gone with, or rather I've recommended to my roommate, an extra munitions, which states, when you equip this card, place one ordnance token on each equipped uh, warhead, missile, and bomb upgrade card. When you're instructed to discard an upgrade card, you may discard one ordnance token on the card instead. So with extra munitions, it basically allows you to carry uh, two of the same weapon, but at a much cheaper cost. So these only cost. So in, in the in the past, before extra munitions came out, if you wanted to have two proton torpedoes, you would have to fill up both both torpedo slots, and each of them will cost four each. With the extra munitions, 
um, you put on a proton torpedo and then you put on an ordnance token on top of that, which basically means you now have two of the same type, but they cost they cost uh, two less thanks to um, extra munitions. And it applies to every second. It applies to every uh, or um, warhead, bomb, and missile you equip. So, just one of those extra munitions applies to all of your secondaries, which is awesome. Now, as first missile I've chosen, the first missile, we've gone with an ion pulse missile. They have an attack by you three and can be used at range two to three. It states: discard this card to perform this attack. If this attack hits, the defender suffers one damage and receives two ion tokens. Then cancel all dice results. So, with ion pulse missiles. It's an upgraded version of the Ion Cannon, or the Ion Cannon Turret. Uh, instead, because when it hits, it deals two ion damage, which is especially useful against um, larger ships, because large ships take two ion tokens to completely immobilize. And then once once they immobilize, um, both of those become removed, and the ship's able to move like it would normally again. So this is especially lethal against Starfighters, because they'll be, they'll be disabled for two turns, allowing um, Rexler and Maul and Athel, as well as Jonas, to get into a better firing position and attack them from a different angle. Um, so yeah, they also suffer one damage from the pulse from the impact of the missile. So there's that to go for as well. And for his second missile, we've chosen some cluster missiles. My personal favorite missile. And because cluster missiles have an attack by you three, they can be used at range one to two. And they state spend your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack twice. So with cluster missiles combined with extra munitions, you now have a total of four cluster missiles. Because the cluster missile you attack once, and then you attack again before you discard it. But with the extra munitions, you attack with your cluster missiles twice, discard the ordnance token, and then you get a second chance with your missiles the following turn. So effectively, you have eight shots. Or you have um, uh, four shots, uh, or yeah, you have uh, eight shots with the um, cluster missiles thanks to the extra munitions. So this basically turns Captain Jonas into a more lethal um, bomber because... With the ord extra munitions, he's able to carry more, uh, more ordnance, and yeah, and just in case you miss, you have a second chance. Now let's move on to the next ship, the all arounder in this build, and that is Rexler Breath. He has a pilot skill of eight. He flies the Sinar Fleet System's Tide Defender. He has an attack value of three, an agility value of three, a hull value of three, and a shield value of three. So he's a very balanced ship. You can take on the Focus, Lock-On, and Barrel Roll actions. He costs 37 squadron points. And he's able to take on an Elite Pilot Skill upgrade, a Cannon upgrade, and a Missile upgrade. His ability states, after you perform an attack that deals at least one damage card to the Defender, you may spend a Focus token to flip those cards face up. So, this is where Captain Jonas comes in. This is where Captain Jonas' ability comes into play. Jonas allows Rexler to reroll any of his attack dice, as long as he's in, uh, two of his attack dice, as long as he's in range one. Um... As long as, yeah, and as well as he's, as long as he's using a secondary, and then of course, um, if at least one of those cards is a um, is a face down damage card, face down hull damage, um, you can spend a focus token with Rexler um, to change all of those hits, change change that hit into a critical, and um, if they inflict even more damage and more um, uh, damaging effects. Um, so yeah. Um, for his first upgrade, the second the secondary that my roommate chose was Auto Blaster. Auto Blaster has an attack value of three and can be used at range one. It states attack one ship. Your hit results cannot be cancelled by defense dice. The defender may cancel critical hits before hit results. So with Auto Blasters, you need to be up close and personal with your opponent. Uh, none of if you get any standard hit rolls, they cannot be cancelled by dice, they can only be cancelled by evade tokens. And um any criticals that you roll, however, can be cancelled before the hits. So, say if you roll two criticals in a hit with the auto blaster, the enemy can cancel those criticals, but the hit remains as long as they don't have a, uh, an evade token. So, auto blasters ensure a guarantee hit. To make sure that the focus token that uh, Rexler gets is not spent, I've chosen, we've also added marksmanship to his, um, his uh, build. It states... When attacking this round, you may change one of your focus results to a critical result, and all other hit result uh, focus results to a hit result. So with marksmanship, this kind of saves on this kind of saves on your focus token, because if you take a focus and you um you let any focus results, you're gonna want to spend that focus token to change all of those focuses into hits. With marksmanship, it's basically a, 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 an even better focus token because um it's it, it, it's an even uh, a more powerful version of the focus action because any focus you get. 
the first one becomes a critical before the rest become a hit. And then, of course, if, if it does hit and you deal uh, hull damage to your enemy with the auto blaster, then you can spend that focus token you got to change the fir to change um, um, any hits that were dealt uh, to the enemy to um, criticals. So yeah, that will ensure that you and you'll probably get a direct hit or uh, munitions failure or anything that will anything that will turn the tide of the battle to your favor. And finally, we go on to the last ship in the build, and that is Muller Mithel. He has a pilot skill of seven. He flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Fighter. He has an attack value of 2, an agility value of 3, a hull value of 3, and a shield value of 0. He can take any focus, barrel roll, and evade actions. He costs 17 points, and he's only able to take on an elite pilot skill upgrade. His ability states, when attacking at range 1, roll 1 additional attack die. So Malamethel is, is a ship that is especially dangerous at range 1. Because not only will he get that extra attack die for being at range 1, he'll also get another attack die on top of that, because his ability states, when he has at range 1, you can roll one additional attack die. So, altogether, that makes Maul and Mithel have an attack value of 4 if he's at range 1 of the enemy. And, of course, because TIE Fighters are very, very nimble, I've decided, at first my roommate wants to go with Predator, but I said, no, 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 no. Don't go, don't go, with, op don't go with Outmaneuver. Outmaneuver is a good card, but I chose... Instead, I said, for the extra point, go with Opportunist. Because Opportunist allows you to get stressed for an even bigger, uh, for even more of an attack value. And um, because the TIE Fighter has a fair number of green maneuvers on its own, it's pretty easy to get rid of that stress because the TIE Fighters are already a very nimble ship. So, Opportunist states, when attacking, if the defender does not have any evocus or evade tokens, you may receive one stress token to roll one additional attack die. You cannot use this ability if you have any stress tokens. So, yeah. Um, with Opportunist, if you're attacking at range with Maul and Bethel, he'll get the bonus attack bonus plus his ability, and then stress him out with Opportunist to give him that extra attack value, so it'll make his attack value 5. And of course, with 5 attack dice, that's pretty much a guaranteed hit. You know, unless of course you're fighting an A-Wing, in which case, you know, there's still that chance that you'll miss. And, um, so yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say this is my, um, I guess you could say this is my Marksman build. Or rather, this is mine and my roommate's marksman build. Uh, the advantages of this build is um, Jonas's ability it goes hand in hand with Rexler. So he and Dro he and Rexler are going to be working together. And Mal and Mathel, while he can also work in tandem with the ships, will probably most likely be going off and attacking enemies at a different angle, and also taking advantage of his ability at range one as well as opportunist to stress him out. And the next turn, you can make a green maneuver and get rid of the stress the next turn and allow him to use Opportunist again, provided you know, provided they're in range. The build's weaknesses are... Rather, another strength is uh, Rexler Brath is the only ship in this build that does not have... that that, that, that cannot get stressed by using a K-turn. Because to him, because to a TIE Defender, a K-turn is a white maneuver. So if you're stressed, you can still perform a K-turn, which, which can be quite advantageous and can throw your enemy off. And like... Be like, wait a minute, you just got a stress token. How can you do a K-turn? Be like, because K-turns are white maneuvers for a TIE Defender. So yeah, that, that, that's sure to help catch your enemy off guard. And of course, with the Twin Iron Engine Mark II on Jonas, it makes it easier to get rid of any stress that he has incurred on him, be it going through a debris field or doing a K-turn himself, or a red maneuver, because it turns all of his banking maneuvers into green maneuvers, so he can do a bank three, get rid of the stress, and still be in range to attack with his any of his secondaries or his primary weapon value. Now for the weaknesses of this build... The biggest weakness of this build is the tie defense, the tie, the tie bomber, and the tie Mala Mithel. Jonas and Mithel do not have shields. Uh, however, Jonas can take um, about the same, roughly the same hits as Mala as Rexer Breath, but they're all hull value, so he's ex he's incredibly susceptible to criticals. Uh, whereas Rexler, he has three shields before three hulls, so he's kind of safe in those um, criticals until his shields are down. But with Ma with Mauler Mithel, he's especially vulnerable because his agility and his hull value are decent, but he has no shields and his his attack value is kind of you know it's okay. Um, but yeah, and also um, while Rexler is able to perform K turns without getting stressed, his his sharp turns like with Jonas are all crit are his sharp turns sharp one and sharp two turns, they're all um. They're all red maneuvers, so it's easy. If, if you want to get in range, you'll, if you want to get in range but the enemy's too close, you're going to have to risk getting that stress. 
and um, Rexler doesn't have that many green maneuvers to go with. So so he's kind of like so Rexler is kind of like a heavy bomber, whereas Captain Jonas is just the regular bomber. But now with the S twenty nine ion engine Mark II, he can kind of get rid of the stress. He has an easier time getting rid of the stress than uh, Rexler does. So um, yeah. Uh, this is the this is uh, the marksman build uh, uh, the the imperial marksman build I have. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. If you like, you may use this build in any competitive or casual play, or if you want, you can tweak it or completely revamp it to your own mod specifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Corbin Twenty Two signing off.